So we are going to get to the question that I've been teasing for a couple of days and teased on the thumbnail of when will Optimus be able to pick up a thread and pick up a needle and then thread the needle, which would be a pretty remarkable thing for a robot to be able to do. But to be honest with you, I'm putting it last. Yeah, because Elon put it last. And so I'm going to put it last. Uh, we're going to talk about Elon's plans for peace in the Middle East and in the Ukraine. We're going to talk about you know, his conversation uh, with Lex Friedman as they talked about the source of thought and the thought and the source of emotion and how that impacts general AI in the future. We're going to be talking about uh, that subject in great detail, as well as his concerns about the problem of not enough electricity and uh, he's kind of moved some of the goalposts on that. So we'll talk about that. And we will talk about Optimus and full self-driving. All of that <laughs> and more. This is Randy Kirk. Please hit like and subscribe. Was that me laughing at my own joke? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Okay. And then uh, hit uh, notify. Larry Goldberg will be with me uh, shortly, just in a few hours. And we will talk about the market today, <laughs> at least at this moment as I'm recording this. I'm a little surprised that the second leg of the bull has ignited on this Friday with no news. So we'll talk about that with Larry later today. And then uh, tomorrow morning, I'm planning to do a QA. and a um, And then on Saturday afternoon, as always, we'll have our news because nobody else does the Tesla news on Saturday. All right. Don't forget to buy your Cybertruck. You know, you I mean, this one, not the not, not the real one, but the the, the bottle cap opener. You know, you need to buy this. All the information is below in the description. If you'd like to place your order now and then, of course, join Patreon. All right, let's jump into the conversations that Elon, this, by the way, is a fantastic uh, uh, conversation with Lex. He, Elon was so relaxed. He seemed so at ease. They really enjoy each other's company. You felt like you could have just sat there at that same table and engaged with them and had a wonderful time with both of them. They're both so transparent and real. Um, enjoyed it immensely. You may want to go ahead back and take a look at the whole thing. Anyway, even if you do want to go back and look at the whole thing, or if you've already seen the whole thing, hopefully I'll add some color and some, some thoughts that maybe you did or didn't think of while this was going on. So number one, I if I was going to write another book, I would probably write it on curiosity. I spent, I think, the very first uh, chapter in uh, the first chapter in terms of Elon's, you know, massive capabilities in my book, the Elon Me Me Musk method, has to do with curiosity. This is the underpinning issue, maybe of our time, actually, believe it or not. Um, but it's certainly the underpinning issue of what turns people into entrepreneurs, what turns them into pure scientists, what turns them into people who are maybe the most productive on our planet is curiosity. And I believe, uh, Elon didn't say this, I'm adding this for color. <laughs> I believe that we're not uh, causing our children to be creative enough. I think that we are limiting the, the, the potential for our children to be as creative as they could be. That's just my opinion. But anyway, Elon says that creativity is the key to all everything that he does, that is where it starts. He talks about first principles, of course, but you, before you can even get to first principles, you have to be curious about what makes things works, what makes things work, and what are the foundational principles around you from everything from how a butterfly gets, uh, you know, crazily across the yard and then lands right on the <laughs> flower and exactly on the stipe, what's that thing called again? I forget. Anyway, lands exactly where it's going after looking like it has no idea where it's going. Anyway, if you're not create, if you're not curious about those things, uh, you're probably not going to want to take a, a direction like an entrepreneur or like Elon. So then he switches and they they talk about uh, the Israeli situation in Gaza because and also the Ukraine with Russia. Obviously, these are two very big issues for Lex, as he is half Russian, half Ukrainian, and is also Jewish. So he's really involved all over the world right now. And this is really, you know, something that is on his heart all the time, if you listen to Lex. So um, Elon's thought was this. He says, you know what, the U.S. has shown, and I'm going to put in parentheses, albeit inconsistently, that acts of kindness work really well to create stable relationships with friends and foes 
even defeated foes who you might prefer to despise forever. So we could take that, you know, look at Germany, we could look at Japan, we could look at all of the allies during the uh, post-war era. Uh, but, you know, the one country that we did not have a Marshall Plan with was Russia, because we were still, we were uh, too divided in our opinions and our thinking about Russia at the time. So all the countries that we helped, Russia, Japan, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Japan, <laughs> Germany, Italy, all of the countries in the, in the uh, European Union uh, today, all of those countries got helped by the United States with clear cut acts of kindness. It doesn't last forever, but those acts of kindness matter. And we now have a great relationship with Germany, Japan, Italy from the Axis. And uh, we continue to have great relationships with our allies for the most part. So he says we should apply this principle to the Gaza. And uh, he says they, that once the uh, he says, yeah, they, he doesn't specifically say this, but he gets this close. He says, yeah, I agree. You're going to have to get rid of Hamas. He didn't say that, but very close to saying that. But once that's done, then is, Israel should go in and really do the, do the Marshall Plan. That's kind of what he was suggesting. Go in with unbelievable amounts of kindness, all kinds of hospital you know, solutions to uh, health care and whatnot after the war go in and make that <clears throat> those territories make those territories great uh while you come up with a way to have a stable government there and that's a, another story all right uh he doesn't have as good a, a recommendation for ukraine russia because obviously they don't hate each other that's the funny part about this whole thing uh it seems to be more of a war about ports it's a war about what Russia thinks that they own and should own and historically should be able to take care of. Anyway, uh, this war is going nowhere, according to both of these guys. They they don't see it as winnable. Um, and uh, they're recommend, or Elon has been recommending peace for a year. He continues to say they need to sit down at the table together. So anyway, I thought it was interesting uh, to hear a much greater detail with historical context, which is what Elon did. He's, he says, I've read pretty much about every single battle that's ever taken place historically and gotten his and, and, and taken a lot of ad advice from how those battles uh, were structured and how they worked out. Anyway, uh, another uh, interesting thing, then they switched the subject around the subject of Grok. Our Grok, actually, Elon called it Grok the whole time. <laughs> so now we can all agree it's Grok. Anyway, and he talked about that in terms of moving towards general AI. And he started that conversation philosophically. And he says, what is thought anyway? Where do thoughts come from? What are emotions? Are they just a bunch of atoms that he says that, you know, collide in a certain way and we end up with this kind of a, an emotional response or this kind of a thought? Uh, he felt, and I think that uh, Lex agreed with him that, no, they seem to be more than that. Um, but what are they <laughs> and where do they come from? You know, you know, I'm a Christian, so I have a very clear idea of where those things come from. But can AI get the answer or if AI can't have thoughts are emotions and the way that we understand them, um, then how can it be more intelligent than humans? So in order for AI to become truly sentient, I personally believe that's impossible. It would have to, it would need to have truly original thoughts and something like a conscience with built-in ideas of morality and ethics. And how would those soulish types of inputs get there? Where do we, where do we get them? So um, along those lines, uh, maybe these things are 100% deterministic and based on millions of years in cause and effect. Well, how could you even get that to be built into an AI? Um, you could only put in what we know today based on you know, the information that can be put into the AI through text and through video. And uh, would it then get the same soul that we have? Would it have the same ideas in terms of morals and ethics that we have? <laughs> so this is not something they actually, they didn't have that particular conversation. That's my question. All right. So they did ask, they, again, they didn't ask it quite this way, but this is the way I took it. Is there a greater intelligence for whom we are the fish in the aquarium? And has that intelligence created a simulation? And wouldn't if that's true, wouldn't that intelligence be the determiner of whether or not future robots are in the simulation. 
And then Elon says, and then his big question is, what is outside the simulation? So all of that, quite fun, quite interesting. Then they got more practical. He says, okay, the current GPT engines are not internally logical. They have drift. So as you do the uh, any kind of a uh, logical uh, uh, series, if you are slightly illogical on the first item or the second item or the third item, then the further you get out on the tree, you get to the place where it's very illogical. So this drift, both of them immediately agreed that you need to account for the drift. But then they also talked about the idea of coming back holistically and looking at the entire result that you've created and then taking a holistic look and seeing if it is obviously wrong. I did this with my kids with regard to math. I said, when you get done with the long problem, even a short problem, but a longer problem, take a look at it and say, is the answer stupid? <laughs> so is, does the answer to something having to do with velocity have an automobile traveling 12,000 miles an hour um, other than maybe one that Elon has put on the neat nose of a, of a spaceship? Anyway. Next question they had on this particular show was, are there any aliens? You know, Elon's been asked that a lot, and he says that he should know more about it than others. I've actually had this on the show the other day, and somebody said, um, Elon has just said that he has not encountered any aliens on Earth. He says he is looking hard. He has absolutely zero evidence for aliens on Earth or anywhere else. Um, so that's what he said in this particular show. No evidence for aliens, and he thinks with all those satellites up there, uh, if there were any aliens up there that are physical, then his satellites would be bumping into them from time to time. Anyway, that's, <laughs> that, was, that was the answer to that question. Then they took a, a, a tangential look at the energy problem, um, which Elon has been very worried about this year. He says, uh, and, and, and I will say, let me uh, back up just a little bit. There are a lot of folks that are worried that the electric vehicles electrification of our homes that are going from gas to electricity or from oil or coal to electricity. Then as we go to heating and, and, and cooking and things like that with electricity, as opposed to other, you know, petrol fuels, um, and we move our cars into electrification and our trucks into electrification, that the, there won't be enough power being generated in order to, to take care of all of this and that the grid won't be able to take care of it either. And Elon says, yeah, but we have a bigger problem. He says, that will be the first problem. First, we will have a problem because of cars and energy. He says, but then we're going to have a bigger problem when it comes to um, AI and the massive amounts of data storage, data uh, compute that that's going to take, which will use up massive amounts of energy. Uh, so, you know, the folks who are worried about all this have been saying, how come you're closing uh, down um, uh, generation, like, for instance, uh, in particular with regard to uh, nuclear, and why aren't you actually building more nuclear? Why aren't you actually digging and, and trying to come up with more resources in terms of fracking and gas and oil um, until we know that we can cover all of these things? And uh, I think uh, Elon has said in the past, he would agree with that, that we need to be doing everything that we can right now until we get to that point where solar wind battery can be 100% are darn near 100%. So, um, so then uh, he said that the bigger problem is <laughs> immediate. He says right now, there's not enough silicon and silicon prices are gonna be going up because there's just not enough silicon. Um, he says uh, transformers will be a problem in a year to which Kevin Basilek um, on, uh, on X said, replying to match has a Mac, uh, anyway, he says, yeah, agree here. I think a lot are private and like printing at the money, like printing money at the moment. He's talking about transformers. We pay 200,000 for transformers that cost 75 to 80,000 two years ago. Big utilities are panic buying transformers like toilet paper at the start of COVID. So yeah, there's, and this is not just the major transformers, like utility size transformers, transformers, because uh, you're you have to take, Electricity, you have to take it from, you know, massive, massive, massive amounts of power, and you have to transform it down to little bitty, little like, you know, fifty watt light bulbs, um, it, 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 and and even smaller. So this is the issue. 
no transformers, not enough transformers. So we're going to have to build a lot of transformers. So as Elon has done in the past, he's basically putting out a call. He says, we need you to make a lot of transformers. He says, this will impact transformers in a year and electricity in two years. This is much sooner than he said previously. I think he was talking about three to four years, and now he's taking two, and that was only a couple of months ago. So anyway, um, he says we need to triple, triple the total amount of usable electricity. Now that would mean, he didn't say this, but he's, I think he said it before, there's two ways to do this. You can make more electricity, or you can use what you got better, okay? So he says the big, one of the big issues is there's not enough buffering. I'm sorry, there's no buffering. There's no buffering now in, on the production and transmission side. So you have, to, so they have to build enough energy uh, resources, production resources, in order to take care of the very worst day of the very worst week of the very worst month, you know, ever, or they go down. And yet for the rest of the year, they're using a fraction of that amount maybe 70% or something like that. So if you have batteries in the system, now you can set up buffering, which is what they're doing primarily in Australia right now. A lot of what they're doing down in Australia right now is just this buffering. And when they put them in and they they put them in with these solar and wind system uh, situations, those are also buffering. And when you set up virtual power plants, you got buffering. And when Elon sets up his own electric companies in Texas or in England, as he's done, a lot of that is buffering. And it's using software in order to use the electricity that we are already producing more efficiently and effectively. So that is going to be a very, very big issue. And it's one of the reasons why the energy division of Tesla is got unlimited growth potential, according to Elon, is because they need massive amounts of these humongous batteries, and uh, they're never going to be able to build them fast enough uh, in order to take care of these issues. So when we look at the future value of Tesla, one of the major, major things that's going to be a big part of that value is going to be a terawatt of batteries being produced each year for both utilities, for, for all kinds of purposes, but also for in your garage as a power pack. Okay, so then he says, um, yes, I already said, okay, so now we got to FSD and Optimus. The new approach that we're taking using video in and action out has changed everything about car, the, training the car and the bot. It, he, this is almost a direct quote. It can now read signs, but it wasn't taught to read. It is learning through the use of correlative clusters, cor correlative clusters, just like humans do. So we look at a whole bunch of different stuff and then we correlate it. And we say, okay, based on all of that stuff, I now think that this is true. And then you test whether it's true. And then you, while you're testing it, you're bringing in new data and now you're correlating that with the old data and you're getting more refined. And then you test that theory. I mean, it's something as simple as eating an apple. You pick up the apple, you have an idea, somebody's told you that it's okay to eat it, you start to eat it, it tastes good, it doesn't kill you, you start to correlate that data. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so, but he said that, that uh, he, he never, he said that vir, video neural nets and text are now merging. He never took the bait on the question he got asked twice, which is, are video, are, uh, are text better? He says, they are merging. So you've got video input that they're doing primarily. I'm taking away from this that they are adding text now because what? They've got 80, um, uh, an 80, uh, uh, I forget the, the the term now. They have this massive cluster of NVIDIA, NVIDIA uh, computers now um, uh, running text data for X. You've got a whole bunch of NVIDIA computers plus Dojo running the video text down at Tesla. And I'm guessing uh, both of those companies are talking to each other about this and they are merging. He didn't say that, but how else could you take? It's got to be what he's talking about. All right. One of the biggest takeaways was Elon's assertion that Tesla's approach is more compute efficient. This was a huge deal. It they only get 100 watts in the car. That's all they have in the inference computer that's in the car. That's it. Now, humans use about 10 watts, he said. It says the AI now uses 10 megawatts. 
<laughs> but they only get to use on the inference computer that's actually driving the action. They only get 10 watts to, to, to I mean, 100 watts to work with, and he thinks they can get it down to 50. So what does that do? It gives Tesla a massive lead in the, in the whole category of this chip, this inference chip that will be used on the cars, on the robots, and probably in other places as well um, in order to do AI in the real world. All right, then he goes on and he talks about the optimist. He says that this is this is uh, slightly new news for a lot of people. Okay, it was not new news for me at all. I've heard him say this before, but I think people were confused about this. Every single part of Optimus had to be built from the ground up. <laughs> now, I think there's a chance that there might be some kind of a wire that wasn't built by Tesla. But basically what he's saying is, he says it's not, it, it's not just the motors. It's not just the actuators. It's not just the plastic embodiment. It's not, you know, every, there was nothing that they could get that was on the shelf already. Every single part had to be built. Every actuator, every motor. And so now they've got this amazing number of motors and actuators that they are building for themselves. Who knows? There may be other applications for these as well. Maybe even selling to other robotics companies. But in the meantime, interesting that every single part um, so he says the FSD chip, <clears throat> the FSD chip is small, 100% made by Tesla. Has here? I'm sorry, he didn't say this. Dave Lee was talking about this yesterday on his show. The FSD chip is small in terms of its wattage. It's it is made by Tesla. It has huge compute, low watts, and inexpensive. Um, very very big deal. Now then. Elon said when he was asked, what are some of the hopes for Optimus or what are, what, what are the, the expectations of what Optimus will be able to do? And Elon says, well, I've got this, this you know, performance indicator, key performance indicator that I've got in my mind. And that is that, that, test, that the Optimus will be able to pick up a needle, pick up a thread and put the thread through the needle. Now that would take massive amounts of coordination dexterity, finesse, you know, I mean, male children have problems with this, something in Huckleberry Finn, I believe. <laughs> anyway, um, so when will it, the next question was, when will this happen? When does Elon Musk believe that it will happen? And he said, probably within a year. Now he said that was an optimistic estimate and he's always, you know, optimistic about these kinds of things. But if he believes that Optimus could thread a needle maybe within a year, I believe that that means Optimus is doing a lot of stuff really well right now. And I'm hoping that we'll see that on November 30th. Um, anyway, he went, his final thing, uh, a couple of things he said was, number one, Optimus will train on videos. It will train to do useful tasks on videos. I've been saying this for a while. I believe that's what was going to happen. Uh, uh, John uh, Gibbs has been saying that, Scott Walter's been saying that, but this was confirmed. And then he finally said, he says, my mind is a storm. He says, most people have no idea. They wouldn't want to be me. <laughs> so, so anyway, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. What did you think about any of that? What are your thoughts and comments? Um, what did you, did, if you listened to it, let me know what you thought. Did you think it was as, a fun a conversation as I did. Um, and then please hit like if you like today's num uh, you know today's episode, hit subscribe and notify so you can see Larry later. Larry's coming later. <laughs> Larry will not be late, but he will be on here later. And then tomorrow morning a Q and a followed by the Tesla news on Saturday afternoon. All right, um, get on Patreon and buy the cyber truck. Um, uh, a bottle opener and refrigerator magnet. Remember, it has two functions in addition to looking really cool. <laughs> so it has been great talking to you.